Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com. Uh, I had somebody ask me, I'm um, going uh, to talk more about the, the knives, and uh, someone asked me if uh, we used uh, bayonets in combat, and also he asked if we ever did uh, fixed bayonets, uh, and fixed bayonets where you stick them on your, the end of your gun. And, uh, well, first, um, I, I've spent most of my life trying to forget uh, Vietnam. And, uh, but I've had to, I've had to think on it. But uh, uh, remember, I was 18 years old and uh, when I was in Vietnam. And um, I was in the, the jungle along the DMZ. Uh, I was there uh, 13 months. Uh, um, let's see. Our lifestyle, seeing we were living in the jungle, we were camping out every day for 13 months. And every day we could... Uh, be in combat. I'm not saying we were in combat every day. Uh, the the best I can remember is uh, we had a, a major uh, combat conflict about once a month, average out about once a month. And uh, when I say major, uh, it was from maybe 500 to uh, five to seven thousand. And where they got these numbers, I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> can't remember. I'm just a peon, <laughs> and uh, but that's what we were told. And uh, when you and there was about a hundred of us. I think there's supposed to be 120 of us. But see, we were a, a combat unit. You you're going to be losing people all the time, and um, so we were lucky to keep a hundred. And uh, a matter of fact, uh, now um, we still have our uh, reunion. We have a reunion uh, every year. And um, uh, one of the things that they were talking about is uh, uh, we had 103 of us died in the year of 1968. And, uh, you know, and you're, you're thinking, well, if there's 100 of you, how did 103 of you die? Well, uh, we have people uh, dying and getting wounded, and we have new people coming in, in and out, in and out, all the time, the whole time. Um, my wounds were never um, life-threatening. I mean, I didn't have body parts and, and uh, internal uh, uh, problems, you know, so well, I did have one internal problem. I had a bellyache and uh, it was nervous stomach and it ended up I, I went to the hospital with a nervous stomach. Everybody teased me and you know, big bad marine goes to the hospital for a tummy ache. So, but anyway, uh, that was that was the only time I was hospitalized. But um, uh, we have people going in and out all the time. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, um, I, uh, my mind has blocked out a lot of uh, a lot of the 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 pure life and death hand to hand uh, combat uh, it, because like I say it's a really really bloody mess and normally when I remember stuff I think about it uh, um, what I say outnumbered and outgunned. And there's just an overwhelming amount. And I'm fighting for my life. And then the next thing I know, it's morning. <laughs> so I don't know how I made it through the night on uh, many of the, the, the combat uh, situations I was in. And uh, as I say, it's just so much, it was, it was impossible to live through it. I don't even know how I made it. But... Uh, 
uh, I, I made a, a series of videos. It's under a, a crappy Vietnam uh, combat stories. And uh, I say, I'm not, I really, like a lot of people, I don't like talking about it. But my wife told me I need to make a record of it. And that's the only reason why I made it. And I put it on a blog, and it'll be listed down below. And, uh, but it, there, I just tell stories about what I remember. And, uh, but like I say, it's, it's hard for me to come up with a lot of detail. Uh, some of the stuff, I really know the detail. And some of the stuff, I don't. I, I haven't figured it all out. But anyway, talking about the bayonet, I forgot. Uh, all this time, I haven't even been thinking about it. But until when uh, uh, they asked me about the bayonet, uh, yes, uh, they did. Uh, I think we're right back to what I said before. In my little world, I'm here in this hole. 10 to 20 yards over is three more people. And 10 to 20 yards the other direction, there's uh, three more people. And what happens in my hole is different than what happens in their hole. So I really can't speak for everybody. Uh, now, the, the other two that are in my hole, I can say something about it. And like I say, uh, yes, they would use the bayonet in your hand. But the bayonet did not work as good as a K-bar. And I don't remember exactly if we were issued K-bars or uh, there was something handed down. Uh, I made a, a video, and I'll have a link for it down below, Inherited uh, War Tools. And, um, but like I say, I'm not quite sure where we, we got a lot of our stuff. The only thing that I know we got was the ARs. They issued us an AR, and it was funny, they, 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 you know, you give them your uh, serial number, and then, I mean, your, your military number, and then they'll write down the serial number of the rifle. Like you're going to get the same rifle back, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but that I know we did get because I thought it was so funny. I'm responsible for this dumb rifle, and then the first time I got in combat, where my rifle went, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, and so then the, the other question was, uh, was a fixed? Uh, did we ever go in the fixed bayonet? Okay, um, like then right back to like say, uh, seldom. Uh, did we do hand-to-hand -hand combat in the daytime? Maybe we did. Uh, but I remember the nighttime a whole lot better than I do the daytime. Uh, nighttime is really, really scary. The, the question was asked, uh, did we ever go in the fixed bayonet? Okay, like I say, I can't speak for everybody around me. Uh, but I say, the, what little fighting that I remember in the daytime, uh, in the daytime, it's easier to see what's going on. So we did more shooting. I don't remember, uh, uh, I know we had it. I know, because we get overrun all the time. I mean, like I say, we were always, the odds were so much against us. So even in the daytime, we would be overrun. And, uh, but I, like I say, I, I, I don't, Remember anything like you see on TV? Everybody, you know, putting their their bayonets on their their ARs and and getting after it. I don't remember seeing anything like that. And um, uh, normally, uh, the hand to hand in the in the daytime, uh, like I say, I don't remember very much of it because of the shooting going on. And the reason I say shooting is because it starts with your AR. And you know how I'm all the time giving the AL hell, but uh, you would start with that. But eventually, your AR would not function. It, it would not handle a prolonged uh, gunfight, even in the daytime when you can sit there and take it apart and clean it and stuff if you have the time, anyway. But um, it wouldn't do it. So fixed bayonets uh, would not be a, a, a matter of choice. Now, the, I did see it on sentries at night. Sentries, whoever's standing watch, they would have a bayonet 
uh, fixed on their AR. And the reason was, so you get tired of carrying the AR, so you stick it in the ground. And so that's one of the best safety features uh, for a gun is the bayonet. Uh, now, um, uh, I wouldn't use an AR uh, with a bayonet on it uh, for combat because it, there's not enough weight and it's not long enough. And uh, if you're going to be using a, a bayonet on them, they're probably going to be using a bayonet also. And so uh, their bayonets is probably going to do better on their guns than it would on ours. I'm just kind of guessing at that uh, because I say that's um, the AR wasn't the for for me and in our hole. Um, it was the only reason it was our primary weapon is because we were carrying it. It's light to carry, and so uh, we used. Uh, uh, the uh, AKs, SKs, or whatever we can get uh, would be better. The only bad thing was they didn't have enough ammunition. So, uh, but you'd, you'd gather up as many as you can and you use whatever you could. And they made uh, much better uh, clubs than what an AR would do. And uh, like I say, when all this is going on, uh, there's a lot of uh, explosions and stuff. So that's why I talk about. Uh, guns getting shot up and, and blown up and you know shrapnel hitting them and stuff like that That's why you need a, a durable uh, gun for, for that kind of stuff. Okay, and um, uh, One of the, the, the another question or another statement he said that uh, they had uh, weapons uh, That were uh, issued to him and they had weapons sent to him and that we did too. We had uh, uh, people would have all kinds of um, weapons sent over to them, and uh, I say, and these are the same weapons. I don't know if they would take them back or not. Normally, people would leave uh, when it's time for them to go. They would leave whatever weapons they had, and because they're just getting on a helicopter, going back to the rear, getting on a plane, and then flying back out. So normally, there was wasn't a whole lot of uh, need for your special weapons that you had uh, sent over to you, uh, such as knives. Uh, oh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, brass knuckles, yeah. People get brass knuckles sent over to them. Man, that'd be scary. I'd hate to send brass knuckles to my son if he was in combat. <laughs> but just thinking, man, you don't be using something like that. But like I say, they did. They had the, some of the weirdest stuff that was sent over. And uh, but like I say, uh, so we we did have stuff sent to us. And uh, like I say, uh, K bars. I say, I don't know if they were always issued. Because I say a lot of times they're coming out to the field one or two at a time. So if I think if they happen to have some AK, uh, K bars, then they would give you a K bar. Uh, and if not, well, then they wouldn't give it to you. I mean, uh, it's funny because I think um, the combat Marines, I don't know for sure. Uh, they, like I say they kept us separated from everybody else. But um, I remember when I came in, uh, Everybody had their job. Everybody did. And seeing I was a, a grunt and uh, 0311, and my MOS 0311, in other words, I was just a grunt. I wasn't trained for anything other than killing. So uh, nobody really got to be friends with you and stuff like that. I guess maybe they thought you were going to die, so no sense getting too chummy with you. So you just you'd come in, go to the rear, and then uh, they have papers. You have all the papers and, you know, uh, Trucks, planes, helicopters will take you wherever you have to go. You just show them the paper and they'll take you wherever you got to go. And then uh, I say, you're there. Uh, like I say, I went in. Uh, yeah, I was there by myself. And so I was just went into the office there and they, you know, no big deal. They just went through the paperwork. Yeah, Mike's here. And, and then they told me where, uh, what truck to get on to get in the ride to get out there. So, you know, I mean, it was no, nothing fancy, nothing like that. I'm just one person coming in, and then uh, I say, so you have them coming in one or two, maybe four at a time would be maximum. But um, very seldom you get very many people coming in like that. And like I say, uh, you're not too well armed. 
you're not, um, and then like I said, they give you an AR, and for us, we, we were trained with uh, M14s, so the AR was kind of, what the hell is this, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, uh, but like I say, but I got my training once I got out in the bush, and then they put me with a fire team, remember, the three-man, three-man militia. Uh, they put me with uh, two other guys, usually one of them was, uh, knew what was going on, and then we just went, we just went from there. But anyway, that was the answer to the question. All right, thank you. This is Mike, nostressmike.com.